Hello everyone and welcome back to Nuclear Scramjet Testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. I've made some changes to our nuclear scramjet. Uh, first of all, I decided to shorten the length of our nuclear engines. They were rather big compared to the SNTPs that we had on the mock-up version. And uh, so I decided that given the thrust that we have, we can shorten it. And that also pulled the center of mass back a bit because it was too far forward. And I've also decided to separate off the jet engines. They were integrated into the body before. I really should put the front end to them, but right now they're just the nozzles. And hopefully that will fix the plume issue, we'll see. And also I have added canards from the Skylon. These are just the Skylon canards. I decided to put them on to pull the center of lift forward. However, uh, we have to be careful about that because, as you can see, they're getting very close when we are empty. So we need to worry about that. And it seems like the problem I had with the throttle was just that I didn't realize that MechJeb would keep the throttle down when any of the engines were had the fuel unsettled. Uh, well, I mean, it's complicated because the fuel didn't get uh, didn't stay unsettled for the scramjet, you see. That's why I was confused. At a certain point, the scramjet should have been able to fire, uh, but... It kept the thrall down and locked the thrall down because I guess the nuclear thermal rocket engines didn't have the fuel settled, but it was just a little bit weird. Uh, but in further testing, it seems like we can just make sure that the NTRs have the fuel settled and proceed from there. As long as the fuel doesn't get unsettled, we shouldn't have any problems. Uh, I forgot to tilt the wings a little bit. You know, that's a trick because they take a long time to spool up. The SNTPs that I used on the mock-up uh, had a very, actually surprisingly short spool-up time. Uh, but these have a long spool-up time. So basically we're going to have to light them as soon as we go into high mode on the scramjet. But that might mean that we don't stay in high mode for very long, which will inevitably be less efficient than if we could stick around with the scramjet for longer. Once the nuclear engines are at full thrust, we need to go up, right? Uh, we can't just stick around. They consume the fuel too quickly. So we have to be aware of that. And optimizing that's gonna be key in terms of how much payload we can carry. So we're going to try to carry some payload. I added some mounting points in the bay, actually quite a lot of them. And so let's just have one of these. You can see there's a bunch of possibilities here. Hmm, it seems like I've made these nodes wrong. Uh, okay, they're oriented like that. They're not supposed to be oriented like that. Anyway, there are four over here, so in theory, if I get the orientation of the nodes right, we can have actually four uh, sats placed vertically, similar to the way they were placed in the shuttle, and that would be nice. Uh, for now, in order to check the payload capacity, I'm going to put one... And let's actually have a decoupler as well, so that once we get into orbit, we can get rid of it. I'm hoping we can get to orbit this time. Uh, but, you know, this is a complicated thing with three different kinds of engines, two of which have two different modes, and it's, it's complicated, yeah. If you're wondering whether the Skylon crew pod can fit in here, the answer is no, I tried. Uh, it's too big. It pokes out the front end. It's, it's okay on length, but the top clips into the Skylon crew pod, so... It's not Skylon crew pod compatible, but we weren't using this as the crude version. The crude version wouldn't have the nuclear engines. So, we have Avgas as our test payload, and I'm not thinking that this can... This is this is an SSTO. It's not going to get a huge fraction of its launch mass up into orbit. And actually, it, it's probably got to do pretty good. I think it can do 8 tons. But... Uh, I mean, that doesn't sound like much, but when you think about it, doing 8 tons is still 4% of its takeoff mass, which is pretty good for a rocket. Of course, it's not just a rocket, but yeah, so we're going to go with 8 tons. So, the landing gear is placed for when the center mass moves back. I don't know if that's going to be good for takeoff or not, whether we're going to have trouble rotating. We'll see. We do have the canards up front now. That'll help. I also made sure that the inner portions of these control surfaces now also actuate uh, before they were just uh, the outer ones because really it was meant for a roll. And I guess we were always going to have to put the canards on. Okay, so with all that said, let's make sure we're at Tampico properly.
The landing gear is still extremely heavy, but basically the body is lighter to compensate, so it's fine. If I made the landing gear any lighter than it is right now, I'd just make the body heavier. Now we're trying to make sure this is... The dry mass of this is heavier than the space shuttle, actually. So... And it would be, I think. Okay, so here we are. Let's see if we can do this without scraping the body flaps off. That's always the... Oh, my throttle's not working right now. Okay, that's got to be complicated as far as throttling down when we need to for the scramjet, though. Okay, so here we go. Oh gosh, um, okay, uh, that's too early. Eek! I didn't know this runway would have a little thing like that. That's a problem. Okay, gear up. Oh gosh, our plumes are back there now. How did that happen? I swear I've got it right. I don't know why the plumes are back there. Why are the plumes back there? Okay, well, I can't throw all of them down like that. All right. Well, I mean, the little effect that they had before is gone, but now the plumes are back there. I don't understand. I swear, the jets are literally configured like the jets on the scramjet were before, and those plumes work fine. I know the thrust transform is in the right place. <laughs> we'll try to ignore them. One of the big problems with this right now is that the scramjet thrust, of course, is very low compared to the center of mass. The center of mass, the nuclear engines are going through it, but the scramjet thrust sure isn't. So it requires a lot of aerodynamic help in order to keep this stable. And that's tough, uh, because first of all, we don't have huge wings. We have big wings, but the body is very big by comparison, too. Okay, accelerating past Mach 2 here. Well, it's not accelerating as vigorously as it was before. audibly hear the poor little engine struggle here, so maybe I'll switch to ramjet mode earlier. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, the switch took a little bit of time, apparently. Um, have they both switched? Oh, no propellants. Only one is activated. Oh, great. Hold on. I'll open the big intake. Hopefully that'll help. No. This one's open. Yeah, open. That's weird. Why does it suddenly not have enough intake air? Last time it had plenty of intake air. Okay, well, if we throttle down a little bit, we can get some. I mean, I didn't change the air intake configuration. We'd like to get to 1500 meters per second, but obviously we have sort of an engine problem here. Can I exit, uh, go up now and thrust? About killing one of the engines? Okay, we definitely don't want to release the payload when we activate the scrum jet. Alright, well, I'm satisfied that we should go for that. I improved the heat tolerance on the nuclear engines, but not that much. Uh, I think that we still need to keep an eye on them. Aerodynamically, I think this is fairly well optimized for this speed. As you can see, we're flat and or directly at prograde the whole time otherwise we have to have a large angle of attack so far so good as far as 
maintaining control of the scramjet, though you can see we're using half of our pitch authority. Fast Mach 10. Well, the low mode will have a severe drop off here. Can't do too much more like this. We'll have to guzzle more fuel. Well, I'm trying to use the low mode as much as possible, though. Okay, high mode time. And let's activate the nuclear engines. Okay, they are on. So yeah, we don't get as much punch from the high mode as we would like. And it seems like the overheating was fine for the nuclear engines this time. Actually, maybe making them shorter was a good idea. They have less exposure like that. Okay, well that's the end of the scramjet. not enough air for it. Now our acceleration isn't great. I mean it's more than one it looks like but we really have to pitch up a lot. Burn time seven minutes, seven and a half minutes. We're carrying the smallest nuclear engines that I thought would be workable here. Well we don't need time to wap waps. It's actually going up the Okay, no need for the scramjet info. Well, the in intake should be closed now. Well, I don't know what Interstellar is doing with the intakes. That's a whole other thing. I can't action group that, whatever it's doing. looking good. Maybe we can carry more than this, in fact. Uh, you really have to get the trajectory and all the switches between the engines right with this. And of course we do want some Delta V to come back. The RCS has been switched to liquid hydrogen only RCS, so it only gets 260 seconds of ISP. It's just hydrogen gas RCS. Which is better than any other gas, as far as efficiency is concerned. I swear the landforms look lower res than I'm used to. I need to check that. That's the Bahamas. They, they usually look a little bit better than that. There's a new install I'm working on, so... Okay, well we're in space. Took a bit. And... We're not going to get too high on the periapsis side, but fine for now. Okay, well, a little bit too long on the periapsis, but we'll correct that at apoapsis. We'll fire these once again. Okay, we are in a one and a half hour orbit. Nice and standard. Tighten that up a bit with the RCS. Definitely not overpowered RCS. Boy, is it dark around here. They're around here somewhere. Okay. There, there we go. One and a half hours exactly. We'll go into daylight. And release the payload. But I wanted to hang out here for... And there goes the precise orbital period. I want to hang out here for a, well, 30 days. Uh, or however long our fuel cell will last. Okay, releasing payload. And trying to avoid payload. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, all the thrusters seem to be firing. 
Okay, so currently with whatever hydrogen we have remaining, we're 88 tons here. 81.58 tons dry. And these are already closed. I had contemplating, I contemplated doing an animation where it would actually close this. Uh, uh, that it would, there would be a flap that actually closes that up. I didn't do that yet. Seems like the boil off in the liquid hydrogen is a little bit too severe though. We're gonna need to get a better method to cool that off. I don't think we can, we, we can barely do two days, much less 30 days, so. We're gonna be coming back home early. Oh, I, I didn't put MLI layers on here. We probably should assume that the tanks inside have some multi-layer insulation. Yeah, I forgot the MLI layers because I had to rebuild it from scratch again. I think I remembered it last time, but not this time. Okay, well, we're gonna aim to land at Tampico, which is right there. I think this is the orbit that we would like to deorbit on. Though, where exactly we should deorbit is a very good question. Um, Tampico, 97 degrees west. Okay. Well, that's 17 degrees further west than Cape Canaveral. So let's go with 109 degrees east as our deorbit location and see how it goes. But probably adjustments need to be made with this. Actually, we, sh we had better start earlier because the RCS is going to take forever to actually deorbit us. And we're testing whether the RCS can do it. Okay, so we're using the six rear RCS thrusters to deorbit here. Ah, uh, well, our, the delta V that we were reading was for with the nuclear engines. The RCS has a quarter of the efficiency. So, I don't know if we're going to get low enough with what we have left. Maybe we should light the nukes. I, uh, for, uh, for the purposes of this particular test, I think we better give the nukes a little try here. Well, we'll take the 20, negative 20 kilometers. So the rest is uh, residuals, but the RCS system can... Yeah, the, people don't like it when I say RCS system. Uh, the R, RCS can deal with it. Did I put Planet Shine in here again, new install? Let's see if we can bump that up a little bit. There, we have some semblance of our ship. Okay, we'll see what happens. So yeah, maybe 8 tons is all we've got, and we'll need to be a little bit more careful with it too. Because of the RCS. Or maybe I should just pack some extra oxygen to make sure that we can use full Hydrolox RCS. Still not as good as the nukes, but probably about 400 seconds of ISP. I was in Fizz Warp and I was using the RCS all over the place on pitch. I was not appreciating that. I think we lo lost a lot of liquid hydrogen because of that. Okay, we're glowing a bit. The landing site's in daylight. We seem awful far away from it right now, though. Maybe I started a little bit too early on the retro burn. Well, looking fairly well balanced right now. 77 kilometers and going still pretty fast. Our vertical speed is trending up though, and there is dawn on the horizon. Okay, below 70 kilometers though, once again picking up, and we're still over the Pacific, and not especially near our landing site. And we're slowing down, so I'm worried that we're going to end up in the water at this point. But! Survival through re-entry is going pretty well. Maybe I'll pitch down a bit. Too. And no, running the jets will not get us there. I think that would last us about 
maybe 20 seconds. Got 20 seconds worth of jet fuel left there. Yeah, it's interesting that trajectory seems to have us coming down ahead of the ballistic trajectory that landing guidance has. Um, that's probably wrong. Uh, yeah, trajectories I still have questions about, but maybe there's some configuration for it to help it out with space planes or something. Anyway, we're uh, not looking great. It'd be wonderful if we could get to land at least. Seems tough. Might be possible. Oh, there's some land over there. I think that's Baja California, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. So that's positive. We haven't been using much pitch at all, which is great. So balance looks okay. So we're like that. I think we can make it to the coast now. That's okay, but I don't think we're getting back to Tampico. Maybe I should have some landing site on the west coast of Mexico. I have no idea how it's getting that stage delta V. Uh, mysteries. Mysteries of Mechjeb. Well, now we're in a nominal flight mode. As opposed to very ballistic, but will that help us at all? Probably not. I want to see where this ends up so that we can calibrate our re-entry location. Okay, well, we're getting pretty low on speed now. Yeah, we're not getting much further than this. I'd like to get beyond this ridge at least. So I'd say about 7 degrees further east would be good. As far as our deorbit location, about 600 kilometers off or so. Uh, these are these are hills, maybe mountains. Okay, what can we do here? I didn't put air brakes. Then again, opening the intakes used to create a lot of drag. Eh, it still does. Not a huge amount of drag. Okay, that's probably too much drag. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You slowed down a bit too much there. But, uh, alright. We have landed somewhere. So, uh, oh, it's doing that thing. Uh, we'll have to move the landing gear further back, it looks like. All right, so successful mission, I guess. We deployed the payload and we returned to the surface, uh, but we have some little details to work out and probably some optimizations, but it's serviceable. It might be interesting. Uh, though, you know, obviously in real life we shouldn't be using nuclear engines like this. Let's just let's set that aside for now and just think Kerbal for once. Alright, so anyway, here we are, the nuclear scramjet. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.